We had this idea that paperwork was causing a lot of problems in the trucking industry. And we thought we saw truck drivers and trucking companies use a lot of paperwork. So we thought, hey, uh, no one likes paperwork. It's uh, the 21st century. So uh, let's, everyone is building an app. So let's build an app that eliminates paperwork. Great, great. Got really excited about this idea. Um, but realized that we were operating inside of a, a silo, inside of our own minds. You know, we thought it was a great idea, but there was, uh, there was, no, there was no validation, there was no proof that uh, anyone really cared. Uh, there was no proof that we were solving a problem. And uh, there was no proof that if we go out and build this app that eliminates paperwork for trucking companies, that anyone is going to pay for it, or if anyone even cares for us to go out and spend all this time and money building this app. So what we ended up doing is we ended up going and talking to these people basically to figure out, hey, if I go out and spend two years of my life and all my savings on this app that eliminates paperwork, does that work? You know, is this going to help your business? Is this, you know, are you going to pay for this product? Is, is there a business there? I learned about customer discovery, uh, the process of figuring out whether you have a good idea or not. Is it, is it worth pursuing? And what customer discovery taught me is to not get lost in the world of excitement about your idea because you're operating in your own bubble filled with your own emotions. And you're inside your own echo chamber of friends and family. You're sharing your ideas with them. What are they going to tell you? They're going to say, go for it. You know, like pursue your dreams. But what customer discovery teaches us is go validate your idea. Uh, flip your idea from being an idea and a solution to, to a problem that it's solving. So the main question you want to ask is, what problem does my idea solve? And more importantly, does anyone care or other people or companies willing to pay for, for, this, for me to solve that problem for them? Before building Super Dispatch, I went out on the road to spend time with my potential customers. And what it meant was riding along with truck drivers on the road for about two months. And I was, I was there initially to learn more about the industry and the culture and the language. But what I ended up discovering is, is, is a much bigger problem that led to the creation of Super Dispatch. Uh, riding along with truck drivers, I, I, I noticed these guys constantly carrying around large stacks and stacks of uh, paperwork and constantly answering phone calls, chasing fax machines. I would visit their back offices and uh, the entire rooms would be buried, uh, the desks would be buried in paperwork and the, the, the floors would have stacks and stacks of paperwork everywhere. Everyone would be manually entering data, there'd be fax machines and this ancient envelope holding machines in the back offices. And this was 2013. The iPhone has been around for seven or eight years and the world has really moved on into the mobile and cloud technologies and the digital world, but transportation was still living in the dark ages. I quickly realized that paperwork didn't bother anyone. No one cared whether they had paperwork or no paperwork at work. That was, that was normal. No one was willing to pay for an app that gets get rid of paperwork. But what I, what I did stumble on as a result of this is the paperwork was causing delays in payment. And that's what people cared about. They would do the paperwork all day long, no problems. But down the road, that would cause issues and delays in payment. And how this happened was by chance, this one guy goes, you know, I, I, you know, well, tell me about your day. How does your day work? And then eventually it leads to the paperwork. And he goes, well, does the paperwork bother you? You know, the, you know what's the most challenging part of the part of the, your job? And I was like, well, I don't care about paperwork. It just takes a couple of minutes. I get it done. Um, and I guess everything else is just somebody else's problem because I send it back to the office and they just worry about it. So I kind of went down that trail and talked to that office. And then they're like, well, yeah, we hate paperwork, not because it's there, but because it comes here so late and it causes major delays in payment. So that really shifted the idea of Super Dispatch from focusing on eliminating paperwork to making payments faster. You have assumptions. Basically, it all comes down to your assumptions. You have an idea. The basic assumptions you're making are that your idea is good, that it solves a problem, that it helps customer or user X, and that they're willing to pay for it. Somehow you monetize this. 
All of these assumptions are in your head, but so they need to be validated, which is why customer discovery is so valuable in an early stage, way before you hire people or you raise money or put your savings into building that business. So what you want to do is you want to test those assumptions um, in the market by going to who you think is going to be a customer. And ultimately that person, the series of interviews, let's say 10 interviews that you, you need to conduct, will validate or invalidate your assumptions. They will tell you if your idea is good or not. They will tell you, they will indicate whether they're going to buy or not buy your product. When you go out to talk to your potential customers or who you think are going to be your customers, you definitely want to listen. You, you want to take in as much as possible, you're learning. And the beautiful thing about customer discovery and listening is the customer will take you to places you haven't even thought of. A lot of times you end up discovering new problems. This is where this is where pivot things. For example, for us, we went into the conversations convinced that the customers hated paperwork. By the end of the interviews, we realized, and this was hard, that that they did not hate paperwork. They liked the paperwork. What they what they kept complaining about were late payments. So, and the paperwork just happened to be the root cause. And had we not gone out and talked to the customers, we would have ended up pouring all of our savings into building uh, an app that eliminates paperwork and does nothing for the payment side. So customer discovery allowed us to uh, figure out what the, what the actual pain point was that we needed to solve. There's this old school of thought where people think that ideas are very valuable. And the reality is, the ideas are not that valuable. Uh, if, if your idea is a good idea, one of the strongest indicators of that is that other people have thought of it as well. So when you see other people having the same ideas you have, that is validation that you may be onto something. And what happens is, if you don't share your ideas with uh, people you trust or people who know what they're doing around you, then you run the risk of uh, not vetting or not validating your idea, you're not figuring out whether you're onto something or not. What actually ends up happening is when you share your idea openly with other people, um, they, they start providing feedback and they start exposing you to parts of your idea that you haven't really thought of. And the reality is no one is going to take your idea and go build it on their own. It's, it's really hard. Businesses are about execution. Businesses don't get created just because you came up with an idea. Businesses get created because you're executed on the idea. And in order to execute on your idea, um, you need to really flush it out. And openly sharing it with people helps you do that. Uh, I, I'd say the two major things that I've taken away from doing customer discovery are great things happen when you're outside of your comfort zone. Sitting in your, in your room, in your office, in your own head, that's not where the magic happens. Magic happens out there. You need to step outside of your comfort zone to be uh, to, to, to new things and new, new environments and expose yourself to the things that don't feel natural to you. That's where a lot of the growth happens. And then creating a business, that's, that's very important. And the second thing is realizing that what you know or what you think you know are maybe primarily assumptions that have to be validated or invalidated. So being in close touch with the customers is, is critical. And at Super Dispatch, for example, as we continue growing, uh, it's, it's, in, it's, in our, it's in our culture as we start adding new people to make sure that regardless of how big we get as a company, to always stay grounded and, and very close to the customer base.